Hello. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, if you can hear me, just say hi in the chat um, before we kick things off. Great. Fabulous. Say hi, where you're from. Um, so hello, thank you for joining us. Um, I'm Laura from Music New South Wales. Um, I work and live on the land of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation and I pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. I also extend those respects to First Nations peoples joining us for this um, live stream um, and to all First Nations people of New South Wales and beyond. Um, so welcome to this lunchtime instalment of Sound Advice. Um, Support Act is offering crisis relief uh, cash grants to musicians and music industry workers rocked by a loss of income due to the rolling pandemic lockdowns. So today we're going to help you take advantage of this opportunity um, with this information and Q&A session, um, just about who's eligible and what you need to do to apply. Um, so I'd like to thank our partners, Create New South Wales, um, APRA and COS, and of course, Support Act. Um, so I'm just going to give a little overview of the session. Um, to take you through the application um, process step by step, we have Anne Jacobs here, who is Support Act's um, National Welfare Coordinator. Um, Anne's going to give you an overview of the services Support Act um, offers, and then we're going to go through the actual application um, and just go through eligibility and then go through question by question um, in the actual application. So um, before I hand things over to Anne, um, just a little bit of housekeeping for you all. Um, if you look at the bottom of the screen, you'll see that there's a um, ask a question in there. So just um, kind of pop your questions that you might have in there. Um, and you can also upvote questions as we go. So if there's one that you're like, I want to know that, you can just upvote it really easily. Um, and if you've got any other comments or anything else, you can just pop them into the chat on the side as well. Um, and just uh, wanted to note that as this is a digital event, it's very um, reliant on good internet. So if we have any um, technical difficulties, please bear with us um, as we work through them. But hopefully things will be completely fine. Um, so let me um, just kick things off now. And I would really like to introduce Anne. Thanks for taking the time to be with us, Anne. Um, I'm just going to hand things over to you. It's really great to be here, Laura. Thank you for having me and thanks everyone for joining in. Um, I am based down in Melbourne, so I'm in solidarity with you. I understand what you're going through with the pandemic up there and all the lockdowns. So I hope you're all going okay and looking after yourselves. Um, really happy to be here to talk through this application process with you and um, hopefully get a few more of you applying if you haven't already or have been holding off or had some troubles with it in, um, so far. So. Um, I'm sure most of you are aware about Support Act um, being the national charity to help artists, uh, musicians, artist managers, crew and other music workers who are facing financial hardship. Um, <clears throat> traditionally, we uh, were set up to help people who had illness, injury, uh, a mental health condition or some other crisis that prevented uh, you from working in the industry. But obviously, at the moment, our biggest crisis that the industry is facing is COVID-19. Uh, and that has resulted in huge impacts on uh, your income uh, and ability to afford all of your general personal expenses. So um, we were lucky enough to receive some funding from the federal, the federal government uh, to be able to continue to support um, our music industry professionals uh, with uh, throughout the pandemic with these one-off grants. Um, these are, just to clarify, they're non-competitive grants. So I know a lot of um, other grants that uh, you might have applied for in the past are competitive grants and have a time period that you, you know, cut off period to apply. Um, there is no cut off period with our grants and um, we treat your uh, case as an individual case not competing against other people. Um, so we still do the traditional grants. If you've been affected by illness, injury or some other crisis, we still have those grants um, as well, but today we'll specifically be talking about the Music Keeper and Crew Keeper grants. I'm going to jump, um, share my screen now and go through the process with you online step by step. So as Laura said, jump in and ask any questions you have along the way. Um, more than happy to answer any questions. Um, I know everyone's situation is quite unique and so hopefully we'll be able to cover uh, most of the questions you have in this session today. but. Um, uh, this will just be a general overview. If you have any further questions, you can always get in touch with me directly and Laura's going to share an email address for you. Um, 
obviously as well, just to let you know, we're recording this session. So um, just, I'd just like to make sure that your confidentiality is maintained in this space. So if you've got really specific questions about your, um, your particular situation and you feel more comfortable getting in touch directly, please feel free. So I'm just gonna share my screen now with you all. Uh, I'm going to jump onto the Support Act website. So if you haven't been here before, um, there's a lot of information on this website. Um, we'll specifically be looking at the Get Help section. But just before we go there, I'd just like to draw your attention to the Resources tab, which is at the top here. There's a lot of um, resources in this section about mental wellbeing um, and including the um, sound check, uh, sorry, the, the tune up sessions here. Um, and other mental health resources. So I'd really encourage you to jump online and have a look um, at those, especially if you're in lockdown, um, some tips and tricks to maintain um, you know, good, good mental health during this time. Um, and also a reminder about the Support Act Wellbeing Helpline, um, which is a free confidential counselling service for anyone who's in the music industry and also the wider arts industry. Um, that's a 1800 number, 1800 959 500, or you can get in touch um, uh, via the website here. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna jump into the, the Get Help section. So if you click here, there's a lot of information about how we help and the different areas of support we have. Specifically today, we're going to go to the Music Keeper and Crew Keeper Crisis Relief Grants. So as I explained, they're, they're one-off cash grants and they're at $2,000 grant or $2,000 at $2,700 if you're a family. Um, there's a lot of, there's a few frequently asked questions on the page here. Um, and I'm just going to jump into who can apply because this is the main criteria that we have. So to be eligible, uh, you need to be an Australian citizen, a permanent resident or have a valid working visa. You need to prove that you've been in the Australian music industry for three or more years and to um, provide us with two re uh, professional referees who can clarify that information. Um, and the main one, and I think uh, Gillian might've had some questions yeah. about that. Sorry. Just Laura. a question on the referees. Mm -hmm. Who do you, um, can, can you give examples of who referees might be? Oh, sure. So um, if you're an artist, maybe you've got a manager that uh, that might be someone that we can contact who can clarify that you've been performing for three years. Maybe um, someone who's booked you for gigs or um, uh, event, uh, sorry, uh, venues that you've performed at, you know, the managers of those venues. Um, it might be colleagues that you've worked with or um, if you're um, a freelance um sound tech you might be able to provide us with referees of places that have you've um, bands that you've worked with or venues that you've worked at um, so it does need to be professional referees who can clarify your professional work in the industry um, so um, it can be a bandmate it can be a, another colleague within the organization or the company that you work for um, so any of those those sorts of referees thank you um, and so the, the final one is that you have household expenses that are greater than your household income. So I'll go through that in, in more detail um, as we go through. Um, I'm just going to jump in um, now as sure. uh, has asked about um, the time frame for hearing back about once you've put in an application. Is there a specific amount of time? Yes, at this stage, we have a huge number of applications coming in. So um, probably since the Victorian lockdown in June and now with the um, various lockdowns, um, obviously in New South Wales and um, uh, Queensland as well, our, our applications have just gone through the roof. We are advising that it can be up to 21 days before you're in con uh, someone is in contact with you, before one of our social workers gets in touch to discuss anything with your application. And then once that's approved, your grant uh, is approved, then there's just a bit of time before we can get um, that payment to your bank account. Um, so we say it could be up to 14 days. We are getting through them a lot quicker and we have brought some more staff on board recently to get through those applications uh, a bit quicker, but it can be around that, that time frame, around three weeks before we get in touch. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. Um, keep the questions coming, more than happy to answer them. <laughs> um, okay, so we'll jump to the application form now. 
Okay, there's a little bit of information at the start and some clarification here. My hot tip here, everybody, is to do a little bit of preparation before you start the application. Um, that can be getting your bank statement, your PDF bank statement for your personal bank account saved and ready to go, and also calculating your income and your expenses before the fact, um, before, we, uh, before you start. Um, what can be helpful here is in the under this expenses tab, there is a spreadsheet calculator. I'm just going to jump into that now. Oh, there we go. So this is a um, calculator. You can open it. You, you do have to download it and open it as an Excel document. Um, and I'll just scroll down to here. This is the expenses section. These are all the expenses that we ask about uh, in your application. Um, and this will help you calculate, calculate um, say your annual expenses into a fortnightly amount. This will be a bit, little bit clunky, but I am actually gonna stop sharing and jump into the actual um, Excel document. Just so I can show you here. Okay, hopefully you can all see that okay. So I'll just show you an example here. Um, this column F is the column that um, calculates a fortnightly amount. So for instance, if you type into the utility section, how much you're paying quarterly on your utilities, that will calculate how much it is in a fortnightly amount. And you can drop down here and change to annually. So if you pay your the annual council rates, you're paying 96, around $96 a, a fortnight. So I would suggest downloading this and having a look through it first and um, making all these calculations, it'll make it a lot easier when you um, do jump into the application form to just be able to fill these, these straight in. Um, another thing I would suggest is having a look at that bank statement, seeing where, what your expenses are at the moment. Um, you know, some, there's a, a lot of the time there's things that we might forget that we spend money on, for instance, you know, any Netflix and subscriptions and things like that, and that can go under any other expenses here. Okay. That's a really great spreadsheet. Um, I'm a secret fan of spreadsheets. So I just put the link to it in the um, chat so everybody can access it there if they want to download it. Um, Thank you. That's great. I am an um, Excel spreadsheet nerd as well, so I really appreciate it. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. I'm just going to jump back into... It's taken me on a little journey. Just share this one with you again. Okay. Um, so we'll get started now. So um, I'll just pop in my details. Some of these, you know, obviously I'll just whip through these ones that you'll all um, be able to answer without any assistance. Uh, obviously, like most forms, the asterisk means there are question, they're questions you have to answer. And if you don't answer them, it will um, stop you from being able to move forward. So on the front page, there are the five questions for um, the five eligibility criteria. So are you a citizen? Have you worked professionally in music? Can you provide two professional referees? Are you struggling financially because of loss of work? And are your household expenses more than your household income? Um, if you select no on any of these questions, you'll see that the next button isn't there. So that means you're not actually eligible. But if you select yes, you do meet the criteria for a grant, so you can start clicking forward. Um, there is a save for later button. Um, that will bring up, I'm not going to do it now because it will make me go start through to the start again. But um, if you click on that, it'll bring up a link and then you can email that to yourself. So there's a little bit of information here um, about that. If you do send that to yourself, you then have to go to your email and click that link to start again. So just to advise there. Um, okay. Let's look through these ones. Um, if you do identify as Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander, 
it'll bring up another section to pop in your tribal clan group. Again, we ask all these general questions. They're mainly for stats information for us. Um, if you click other here, you can enter a different genre. Um, yes, you're applying because of COVID. If you receive JobKeeper or not, again, that's not going to affect your eligibility, but just good for us to know. Um, and you'll be selecting that you heard about this through a state or territory music association. Here are your residential um, address details. These ones, these details need to match what's on your bank account. Um, if we need further information, ID information will come back to you, but that's just something to know. Um, we do contact via both phone and email. So when your application comes, um, is ready to be assessed, a social worker will get in touch with you via either email or your phone number. So just double checking that those are all correct. Um, often checking your spam folder. If you're expecting some contact from us, checking your spam folder, because sometimes things bounce into there. We have that a fair bit. So please just keep an eye on those things. Um, okay, so this is the um, qualifications about um, your application. So tell us about the illness, injury or other crisis that's impacted you. You can put as much detail as you like here. The more information we have, the more uh, support we can provide, really. I mean, you can just write COVID-19, but we'd love you to write, you know, you've been affected by the lockdown. Um, all of your gigs has been cancelled. You've had to reschedule events. Um, you've been stood down from your company. Um, you know, if there's been any other, you know, financial impacts, you know, you haven't been able to uh, pay your rent, things like that. You know, just the more detail, the better. Um, I'm just going to make it really quick today. Um, this section is one that um, we find we don't get enough information from applicants a lot of the time. Um, I don't want you to just write, I've been a musician for 10 years or I work as a crew uh, in crewing. Um, you know, the more information, again, the more information we have, the better. We won't have to come back to you to clarify things. So, um, you know, there's some suggestions down here. So what are your career highlights? You know, um, how long have you been in the industry? Um, some bands you've played with or locations you've played, um, you know, anything that really shows us, demonstrates that, that you've done paid work in the music industry for three or more years. Um, just on that, do you yeah. want to do things, you know, would it be a case of putting links in or would you rather it just be in written form? Um, either's fine. If you put in links, we'll be able to click on them and clarify that. So that's really good. Um, yeah, you know, links to okay. events that you've done, um, you know, uh, links to your LinkedIn or your, um, you know, band camp or anything like that. Um, so, yeah, links are fine. The more, that, the more information you can provide, the better. Thank you. Um, okay, the next one is the grant purpose. Now, these grants, uh, this funding has been provided us to us to support people with personal living expenses. Um, they're not business development expenses. They're not costs of running your business or um, costs associated with your work. Um, so this is why we've got a checklist here now. There's a couple of reasons for this as well that do impact you um, for either Centrelink income or tax. Um, obviously your situation is, uh, you know, everyone's in, uh, financial situation is individual, so I'd always recommend getting in touch with the relevant people. But um, the information we have is that if it's provided for personal expenses, it's considered crisis relief or emergency relief, and therefore it's not accessible income through Centrelink. Um, or taxable income uh, through, through the tax process. So make sure you check with your individual situation. Um, but this, given that we're providing this for personal expenses, that should, that should cover you for that. For that. Uh, again, if, the, if you select other, you'll add in another section. Um, okay, so here's the referee section. So people that you've worked professionally in, um, with in music, sometimes we do, if you, you, we haven't been able to get enough information about your um, professional career, um, we will get in touch with your referees. We'll just get in touch to clarify your work in music. We're not talking about your situation or any, other, any of the other information you've provided. So it's all just about checking, hey, has Anne been in the, you know, working, she said she's worked with you for three years. Can you, can you clarify? 
Um, would you say it's worth making sure that the referees know that you're putting in this application? Um, um, I would suggest, you know, I think that's always a good idea. Generally, we will check with you before contacting them. We don't always have the capacity and the time to do that. Um, so if we haven't heard from you, we might get in touch with them. Um, so it would be good for them to know um, that they might be contacted. I think that's a general, a, a generally a good idea. Thanks, Laura. I have a few questions um, that have come up, but I think I might wait until um, we get into a, another section before I ask them where I think it will be more relevant. Okay, thank so thanks you. Thanks for asking your questions. I see them. Right. Um, again, these are, these are all um, uh, asterisk questions, so you will have to answer them before you can continue on. I'm just going to show you what happens if you, if you don't fill that one in. So it just pop up and say there's a problem with your submission. So errors have been highlighted and then that will be the highlighted section down there. But often people find that they can't move on but they're not sure why and, um, you know, it can be really hard if you're doing it on a phone, for example. Um, so that, that will often be a reason why you can't move forward there. Okay, so this is annual income. Um, Again, use the currency that you're applying. I'm assuming most of you are in Australia, so just, just go with what you, with the Australian currency. But if you're based overseas, um, for anyone watching later on, um, please put in the currency that you're, uh, of the country you're living in. Um, so income here, we ask for both income and expenses in fortnightly amounts, as I mentioned, and that's where that spreadsheet can be really helpful. Um, obviously, your income is re probably really, um, limited at the moment or you know you've had some work a couple of months ago but you haven't had anything recently or you're expecting to not have any going forward um, so you can take an average um, I generally suggest you know look at what your income has been over the past three months and divide that by six fortnights and and come up with a with an amount there a fortnightly amount there um, it's your current situation so don't look at your taxes from the last financial year or the year before or anything or what you were earning pre-COVID. We're wanting a snapshot of your current financial situation. Um, I'll pop in which government benefit will bring up which one you're, you're on. Uh, if you get any royalties, if you get any other income, superannuation income, dividends, anything like that, um, you can pop that in there. Now we do ask for your partner income if you are living with your partner in a household where you share your income and you share your expenses. Um, if you live in, with a partner but you keep your finances separate, feel free to leave their, their income out or and just you can write that in the free text section before what your situation is. Um, but if you live with a partner and you share your income and you share your expenses, we'd like to, to see their, their income and expenses as well. Um, and that's actually probably a good point for me to ask. Um, Danielle was um, asking about um, household income. Um, mm -hmm. It prevents um, her from being eligible. Um, she's still responsible for her share of living expense payments, which exceeds the income. Um, but in short, her partner's income doesn't affect how much um, uh, they're, you know, they're personally are required to contribute to expenses. Yep. Um, so is that like, I think mm -hmm. you kind of just answered that then. <coughs> It's it, even if they do have a partner, if it doesn't impact. Yes, yep. So in Daniel's situation, it sounds like, um, <clears throat> sorry, I've just got a bit of a creaky throat. Um, if you are still required to pay your part of the household expenses, Daniel, please feel free to just pop your income in. Um, you know, yeah, a lot of people, we do have a lot of people who, who live in that financial situation, in that situation where they keep their finances separate. So just put your household income in or your personal income in and just your personal expenses. Great, thank you. And I've timestamped that so you can go back and check that question. Wonderful. Afterwards. Thank you. Great question. That is one that we do get a lot. So thanks for clarifying that. So you'll see um, that it, it manually does a um, calculation here. Oh, sorry, it automatically does a calculation here for you of what your um, total annual income is and then also what your partner is receiving as well. Um, so obviously combined, that will be your total household income. I'll just click forward here. So um, now we're up to your expenses. So as I say, 
do that spreadsheet beforehand because it'll make this section a lot a lot easier to to work through um Some questions um, again now. One is um, if your income just covers. This was um, Caitlin asking. Mm -hmm. If your if your um, income just covers your expenses um, or covers fifty five percent, is there a consideration on a case by case basis? Um, I would suggest that you pop your application in anyway. Our social workers will get in touch with you to talk through. Um, they'll ask you to clarify things. There might be some expenses that you haven't thought about. Um, there might be some calculations you've done that aren't quite right. Um, if it's just covering and you've got some debt, you know, we might consider that anyway. Um, I think generally what happens if you're just breaking even, there's probably some expenses that you haven't considered um, and, and that might just tip you over the edge, you know, over into being eligible. So I pop it in anyway, just so you can, you know, have that contact with the social worker to talk through your particular situation um, and, and we can make some considerations around that. Generally, if it's clear your income is covering your expenses, that will just mean that you're ineligible, unfortunately. Great, thanks for that. Thanks for asking that question, Caitlin. Thank you. Um, okay, so I'll just pop some random figures in here. Um, insurance premiums, obviously, some, sometimes you get a yearly amount. You can divide that by the 26 fortnights. Um, sometimes it's just coming out of your, um, you know, might be a direct debit for your health insurance. Um, Again, utilities being electricity, gas and water expenses. Um, this is one I would often suggest, you know, it can be a bit tricky. So working out your, um, using that spreadsheet to work out what you pay fortnightly. Car expenses. So this is another one to work out annually and then divide that by 26. So make sure you consider if you've got a car loan, uh, your insurance costs for the year, any repairs you might have for the year and your registration plus your fuel expenses. So they're all, all things to consider. Sometimes people just put what's what they're spending on fuel each fortnight, but make sure you consider all of those other expenses as well. Um, I just have another question, Caitlin asks, um, you know, as we, you have to kind of average out the three months, um, but um, they've lost income for all of this, um, the new way that just restrictions. So does that mean that it would just be zero? Sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <clears throat> if you haven't received an income over the past couple of months and you're not expecting to receive any anything for the next little while as well, just put zero. Great. Yep. More than um, happy. And, and one other one quick yep. before we um, go. Um, Darren was asking um, if partner income is also affected by COVID. Um, as um, Darren and Darren's partner present events and share profits together, do we individually apply or is it one yes. app per family? Please individually apply. Yep, that's fine for you both to apply. Um, if you're both working in the music industry, that's great. Yeah, please do. But, you know, again, consider whether you put your both of your incomes in or if you still are responsible for your own income and your own expenses, you can just put your own expenses in there. If you've got combined expenses, just put... Um, put put both incomes in and both expenses. Great, thanks for answering that and thanks for the question, Darren. Great questions. Also good because it gives me a chance to have a little drink. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm just gonna pop some, um, some expenses in here. Um, children, yeah, you might have childcare, other sorts of things, school fees, things like that. Clothing's one that people often put zero down, but if you consider throughout the year, you know, you might need a few things. So I generally suggest you put a little bit in there. Um, pet, pet insurance or vet bills, things like that. Same with medical. People people often don't put anything down for medical, but if you think about whether you go to the dentist once a year or, uh, you know, you have optometry fees or anything like that. So make sure you consider those things as well. This is telephone, is your telephone uh, expenses, not your telephone number. So uh, what you're spending on your phone plan, from the internet. Um, if you have any credit card repayments, what you're paying each fortnight on that. Debt repayments might be a personal loan. Um, so um, anything there. Any other expenses I think I mentioned before, um, say your Netflix subscription or gym, gym membership and those sorts of things that are keeping you happy and healthy at the moment, um, making sure you put those things in. Just remembering that they're not business expenses, so not 
paying for website domains or not paying for, um, you know, other other business related uh, web expenses and things like that. Um, they're all your personal expenses in this um, in this application. Okay, again, it will do a calculation of your total expenses, um, your annual expenses. This is a little bit misleading. This sec uh, so, sorry, this section is a little bit misleading. Um, it looks like um, uh, sorry, it says to qualify for a grant, your annual total expenses must be more than your income. Um, if the amount is zero or negative, you're not eligible. This is positive, so it does it, it is showing that I am eligible. Um, just a question on um, other income. Um, is government COVID disaster payment included in income? It is included. Yeah, we do. Oops, sorry, I'm not sure what's happening there. Um, it is included. Um, uh, in your income, uh, if you're on Job Seeker as well, or uh, any other Centrelink income, it is included. Um, but again, average that out. So if you only just started getting that, you know, in the last week, making sure you consider the time that you were without income um, before you got that payment. Great, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so then we'll just move on to the next section. Um, so if you have any credit card debt, any other debt, you know, you might have a personal loan or a car loan or um, have borrowed money from family. Um, pop in what that is. Mortgage, how much you're owing on that. If you don't have a mortgage, you can leave those questions. Um, if you had help from us before, um, I'm assuming most of you haven't, but if you have had help from us before, we just, uh, around COVID, then it does need to be six months before, um, six months since your last application. Um, and we'll let you know if it hasn't been that long. Um, we're just trying to make sure we, we can uh, give everyone a fair piece of the pie at the moment, considering we've got so many people applying. Um, these are just general questions. They don't affect um, your application uh, at all. And now this is the other section, um, the final section, uh, making sure that you pop in a personal bank account. Um, and that the details on your bank statement match the details that you've provided in your uh, application. So uh, if your address doesn't match, then we'll ask you for some further documentation to show your current address and your current, um, yeah, so that's all a little bit further down, but, um, Okay, so you have to pop a file in here. Um, I did download one the other day. And yes, if you have, so as I said, if your current address isn't the same on your application as it is on your bank statement, then we'll just ask you for, to pop some um, further proof of ID or license or something similar there. Okay. And this is just the final step here. So these are just declarations about um, uh, the application. So um, there's information on our website about uh, privacy data and, and data collection. Um, everything that you've supplied is true and correct. And that you confirm again that the cash grant is to be use, used on personal expenses. Check that you're not a robot. and then you're done, hopefully. Um, sometimes you find that you can't, it won't go through, and it looks like it's gonna prove me right now. Oh, no, there we go. Um, you can sometimes go back and it sort of resets and you go, uh, go previous and then click forward. If you do go um, click previous and then move forward again, um, it contains, it keeps all your, your information. So that's, um, really good to know that you haven't lost all of that, that information. Um, as I say, it's around 21 days before we're able to get in touch. Um, or we're saying around 21 days, it's a little bit quicker at the moment. Um, if you do have any questions in the meantime, um, you feel free to give us a call uh, or email. Um, if it's just checking on your application, 
or um, wanting to supply some more information, I suggest you just wait until the social worker calls you and gets in touch um, because they're just going to be asking the same questions anyway. If you send that information through to the support email address, um, it might get lost in the ether somewhere just with the high volume of emails and applications we're getting at the moment. So um, feel, yeah, just, just um, hold along as long as you can. I know that everyone's in a really desperate situation at the moment, but we are getting through the applications uh, and we'll get to you as quick as possible. Great, thanks so much, Anne. Um, does anyone have any other questions? I can see a few still in the question section, but um, while I have a look at them, just if anyone's got anything else that they wanna ask Anne while we're here, please just um, ask away in either the chat or the question section. Um, uh, Margie uh, Bowman asked, um, just wanted to uh, check, received an email today um, saying that this was uh, musician or industry workers affected by lockdowns. If you have received COVID crisis music keeper grants previously due to COVID imp impacts, can you actually apply again um, as if it's a new a grant? You can, as long as it's been six months since your previous application. Okay, so we are, yeah, we are asking that people do wait that six months just because we have so many people who are applying for the first time. Uh, we want to make sure that we get to as many people as possible. Um, we do have people who have applied, you know, second time um, and yeah, we, we are getting to those people, getting to you as well. But we do just ask that it's been six months just to make it a bit more equitable. Great. Um, and then Caitlin also asked, um, will there be further grants uh, to be assessed down the line if COVID continues? This is all subject to funding, Caitlin. So as long as we've got the money, we'll continue be continuing to distribute that out as, as quickly as possible to everyone. Um, at this stage, you know, we are getting through it. Um, we are, you know, we do have hundreds of applications coming through a week. So we are, we are working through them um, pretty quickly. We do have a really great social work team at the moment, but yes, hopefully uh, subject to funding, we'll be able to provide everyone um, with, with further grants after that six month period. If anything changes there, we'll, we'll be sure to um, advertise that information as soon as we can, pop that on our, our website and social media, et cetera. Great, we had a couple of other questions that um, I haven't got to, but I think we've actually answered them uh, for Caitlin and Gillian. Um, but if uh, that's not the case, please pop something in the comments. Um, otherwise, uh, I think, that's everything. Um, yeah, do you have anything else you wanna add, Anne? No, not at all, but please get in touch if you have any other questions about your particular situation. More than happy to, to um, help you out there. And also please remember about the wellbeing helpline. It's a really tough time, especially when you're in lockdown and with, with that sort of no end in sight. Um, and as I say, as a Melbourneian, I really empathize with you there. Um, please get in touch with someone and talk to someone on the on the wellbeing helpline. Um, do it now before it gets you know too too far ahead. Um, you know, just check in with someone, have a bit of a chat about how you're feeling. It's a really great resource for you. Great. Um, and uh, basically, just want to say um, a massive thank you to Anne um, for taking us through the application okay. step by step. That was really helpful. Um, so a big thank you um, and thanks to Support Act as well, just in all the work that you do. It's um, pretty amazing. Um, and thank you everybody for turning up. Um, this video will actually be available um, uh, that you can access after and check any of the things. Paul, I think we've answered your questions at the beginning um, of the video. So please just pop back in and uh, to the link and you can check it in there. Um, and yeah, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, thanks, Laura. Thanks everyone. Bye.